Be delighted to say on my channel today, Patrick O'Flynn, of course, who writes the O'Flynn Factor. If you want to read that column, do become a member here on YouTube or on Patreon. I'll put the links in the top pin comment. But Patrick's latest edition of the O'Flynn Factor, focusing on the illegal migration crisis across the channel. Now, we have seen reports over the weekend, Patrick, that potentially Saturday could have been another record day, potentially between six and eight hundred crossings. But at time of recording, the Home Office still haven't confirmed the numbers. Uh, yeah, which which makes one wonder just how big it was. Um, certainly uh, Mail Online was speculating that it could be up to 800. Uh, a few kind of local uh, kind of on the ground uh, uh, reporters think it was certainly 700. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a record for recorded uh, landings. Uh, despite, you know, as we as we often say, Priti Patel and Chris Philp, her migration minister, constantly saying they're going to do things that will make this route completely non-viable. It hasn't happened. It's not happening. The thing's getting worse. Uh, and in fact, it, it's obviously becoming much more dangerous uh, in terms of the stability of our country. Yeah, for those who haven't read the O'Flynn Factor column yet, Patrick, can you just lay out in a bit more detail what you're talking about this week? Well, really, I'm posing the question, uh, what is the asylum crisis? And pointing out that for most of those MPs who gathered in the House of Commons last week, the asylum crisis is the fact that they think we're not taking enough uh, desperate people from around the airport in Kabul quickly enough. Uh, and that however many the government do take, which it looks like it's going to be 20,000 on top of 5,000 committed to already, uh, that's not enough. It's got to be more and more and more. Uh, the left basically wanting us to take everyone who wants to come. Uh, there's a push for a de facto right to migrate, I would argue, among foreign nationals to Britain, uh, which is obviously completely uh, unsustainable. So that is the asylum crisis, according to the establishment political class. But in court, according to the, the ordinary Brit, the asylum crisis is quite obvious the wholesale abuse of the system uh, and failure to stop the landings of hundreds of young men almost every day throughout the summer uh, who are either melting into our big cities or if they're detained are immediately 98% of them lodging asylum claims and over 90% of those young men will never leave this country. So that, that that's really saying there's a huge disconnect here between the ordinary people and the political class between what actually is the asylum crisis. I mean, an extraordinary revelation in the Sun story we've just seen. Uh, the Sun revealing that people traffickers are making up to £700,000 from each channel crossing, um, charging up to €20,000 each. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's um, licence to print money for them. It, it tells you as well that the people getting on board the boats, you know, aside from being in a safe country, uh, are not the most desperate people. They're people uh, with substantial financial resources uh, to call on. Perhaps it's been clubbed together by extended family on the understanding that once they're in, uh, they will use, uh, you know, right to family reunification uh, to bring more people in uh, after them. It's a racket from start to finish. Uh, an interesting uh, breaking angle to the story. There are suggestions uh, that there was intelligence from France that said over the weekend, some of the boats might be used to smuggle firearms into the United Kingdom. Now, you know, this is a grave, grave story. You know, we've already had many years of Islamist terror attacks in this country. Uh, we are talking about young men coming in uh, from Islamic countries. We haven't the first idea who they are. Ministers are already saying that some of the people trying to board planes from Afghanistan are on no-fly lists because they represent a terrorist threat. Uh, you know, it's become a national security issue. The cross-channel uh, traffic is now a national security issue, uh, which, you know, should be calling in our national security assets, including army patrols now, I would suggest. It's got way, way beyond a few border force uh, people wearing bibs uh, carrying these people onto our shores. You know, I've got to say, Patrick, there's absolutely huge concern um, from the viewers of my channel, as I know there is 
across the country and what's going on, the way that it's escalated. I mean, obviously, we're not talking about in a matter of months here. We're talking about year after year. We have just seen this continue to escalate uh, and record number of crossings, the records broken repeatedly. Patrick, first of all, I know we've talked about it before, but what do you want to see done? And do you still have faith? Do you have faith in Pretty Patel as Home Secretary to actually change things uh, to stop this crisis from escalating even further? Well, on Pretty Patel, I have faith that her heart is in the right place. There's a big open question now whether she has the administrative abilities uh, to reform the system meaningfully. But I see the blockage really being the Prime Minister himself. I've become convinced that the only way to stop this traffic is to end the pull factor. So uh, every time a boat comes across and the people in that boat are able to set foot on the UK mainland, knowing 90% of them will never leave, that sends out a massive signal to more people to come. And that accounts for the exponential growth uh, in this traffic. So I believe, above all, I, I'm not sure pushing the boats back is more than a marginal uh, possibility in such a busy shipping lane, but offshore processing, I think is the key as used by Australia uh, to stopping this traffic. And we have to uh, set up a camp in a faraway country uh, the people who's coming across should never set foot on the UK mainland. They should be taken to an offshore, uh, maybe a big old ferry, an offshore processing centre, and then moved on somewhere much further away to have their applications looked at. And if they fail, then they're thousands of miles away from the UK. They will never set foot. That's the way to reduce and stop this traffic. Well, look, guys, if you want to read the O'Flynn Factor, head over, as I said, to the top pin comment, and you can see the links there. Uh, myself and Patrick also, of course, have the Snap, our show, our channel here on YouTube. So I'll put a link down below. We're going to have some new episodes uh, of that dropping this week. Patrick, thanks for joining me today. We'll speak again soon. Pleasure.